So where do I see the field of Islamic history going in the next 10 years? And of course the honest answer is I haven't a clue. Uh, I'm not a prophet and you're asking me about the future. Um, you know, I tend to tell people who ask me about the future that my university pays me enough to know about the past but not enough to know about the future. Um, but yeah, I should be able to extrapolate a bit. Uh, one thing that I would expect is that it will get even more specialized than it is now. Um, I mean, when I first, you know, <coughs> I remember a few years ago hearing Dennis Twitchett, who was a very distinguished uh, historian of East Asia, talking about how things were when he was young. And he said that um, in those days you could get all the historians of China anywhere in Europe around one table. <laughs> uh, now, I mean, that would be absolutely inconceivable. And I think something similar has happened in the field of Islamic history, that uh, then it was a small number of people and you could really keep up with the field. Um, for years I've not been able to keep up with the field. Uh, the way I play it now is, um, you know, I have my interests. And if I'm interested in something and I'm chasing it, then I'll find out what is all the secondary literature and uh, I'll read a lot of th things with a certain amount of bad conscience I should have read this years ago, but it just has become impossible to keep up in a proper way. And I guess this is something that, say, American historians are completely used to and have been used to for a very long time. Um, so I would see this tendency to increase specialization as very likely going a bit further in the next 10 years. Um, I would also tend to be optimistic about um, the quality of the work, or at least you know, the better work that will be done. Uh, one of the big problems in this field, I mean, you go into American history, you know English, language is no obstacle. Uh, you go into Middle Eastern history, and you've really got to learn a lot of some Middle Eastern language or languages, often more than one. Uh, Arabic in particular, when I was uh, an undergraduate, my teachers in Cambridge told me that uh, the first 15 years are the worst. And I would say, if anything, that was British understatement in retrospect. Um, you know, I mean, there's a very tough sort of entry fee to be paid in this field. And of course, um, you know, people have often kind of skimped this and tried to work around it. Um, you know, one perfectly respectable way to do it is to, say, work in the public record office in London, where everything is in English, and you can do good work there. But, uh, you know, we've had a lot of people working with Arabic sources who don't really have the training to handle them, and you know, th the results can be kind of absurd and embarrassing and ridiculous sometimes. My sense is that people have uh, increasingly come to terms with the fact, I don't know, this is, maybe I'm wrong, but I sense that there's a trend towards taking the linguistic entry costs of this field more seriously, and that certainly is going to be a good thing.